Welcome back. Okay, so the Quran is miraculous. And Allah challenged the Arabs specifically. Here are your letters. You can't come up with words like these. And challenges humanity at large. Come up with a book like this. But that brings up a question. What's miraculous about the Quran? I mean, we can't go into this in detail. But let's just give, you know, a brief. Uh, the Quran is miraculous in a scientific sense. I'll just give one example. It can state facts that are way beyond its time, that were completely unattainable to the people of its time. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi himself, whom the Qur'an was revealed to, and whom those who claim it's, it's a lie, claim that he was making it up, was landlocked. He never saw a sea. Now can you imagine a verse in the Qur'an saying, مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانِ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخٌ لَا يَبْغِيَانِ That the seas, Allah says that He has merged two seas. Two bodies of water. Sea can mean body of water. Two bodies of water. He has merged them in order so that they may meet. And yet between them, yet they've been merged, between them is, a, is, is sort of a barrier so that they cannot cross and overflow. One wouldn't go into the next. That doesn't make any sense for, for, for a minute. People were just wondering what that was until later on. Nowadays they discovered there's an invisible pressure barrier in between bodies of water. And that actually answers the question because people were like, are they merged or can they not overflow. Well, it's both. They've merged all the way and then they can't flow with an invisible, intangible barrier. I mean, why come up with, if I'm making this book up and I have no idea about what water is and seas, I just state the scientific specific fact. This is just an example. We've talked before uh, about the Big Bang and how something very similar to what is said in the Quran, stated in the Quran. We've talked about how Allah says every single living thing comes from water. We talked about the miracle and the fly for those watching before and he was talking, where well, was talking about it. So this is one thing, scientific, but it can also be linguistic, in a linguistic sense. Allah says in one verse, don't kill your children. min imlaq. Don't kill your children out of poverty. So in other words, if you fear that your children will be a reason that you don't have provision, you don't have food, you don't have money, don't kill your children. We will provide for you and them. So if you're going to kill your children, if you're, you know, because out of poverty, no. Allah says, don't do it. I, Allah is as if He's saying, I'll provide for you and for your kids. In another verse, Allah says, wala taqtulu awladakum khashyata imlaq. Okay, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ It sounds almost the same. And don't kill your children, fearing poverty. We will provide for both them and you. It sounds the same, but it's not. It actually, second time, fearing poverty means that you are afraid that they die of poverty. So then Allah says, we'll provide for them and you. The first time He says, we'll provide for you and them. Very specific. That's just linguistic, just a sample. I mean, I'm not a representative example, and this is not a representative sample, and I'm not a poet. I don't know why this rhymes. But moving on, <laughs> it, it, you can have a prophecy. The Qur'an can say that yes, the Romans have been defeated, but they will soon be victorious within nine years. And it's sure enough, it'll happen. Again, prophecies. It can be, and then one more, there's one more form of, of this i'jaz or this miraculousness, is that the Qur'an, if it's to be applied today by human beings, life on earth would be perfect. Now, we know this is not going to happen, so don't think I'm sitting here being, you know, I'm not talking about a utopia. But if it were to be, Wallahi, if we were to live the meanings in the Qur'an, that's actually, some people say this is the strongest form of the i'jaz or the miraculousness of the Qur'an, is that apply it. Apply it on an individual level, you'll be a good person. Apply it on a collective level, you'll be the best of nations. Allah said to the Muslims, who now are in a very different state, SubhanAllah, because we left the Qur'an, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ That you were a best of people. And you were brought out for humanity. A best of nations brought out for all of the people. So this is the most important and final sort of ajaz. There's many other things we can talk about, but to move on. So Surah Yusuf, we start out and we said it starts off, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif, Lam, Ra, A, L, R, as we've, you know, very, um, what's the word? We didn't do it justice, of course, but just to move on. Tilka ayatul kitab al-Mubin. These are the book, these are the verses of the Mubin book, a very clarifying book. Some people say a very miraculous book. So it's very clear, it's very clarifying, and it's very miraculous. Now there's something very interesting that's going to co come about now. Allah says, the verse right after it. That we have sent down, we have sent it down, an Arabic recital, an Arabic Quran, so that you perhaps may comprehend. So wait, for a minute here, this brings up a question. We have sent it down in the Arabic language? So it's a meaning? Is this what it's saying? That this is, there's actually a meaning that can be said in any language, but then Allah chose Arabic, for many reasons we'll talk about, to say it in. So what is this it? What is this it? This is the question I want to start us off discussing about. What's this it that Allah has decided to send down? This it obviously is the meaning of the Qur'an. What's this meaning? Some people say, the Qur'an always asks, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Do you not recall? Do you not remember? So what does this make you think of? Recall what? Remember what? When the Qur'an asks you this question. 
think it's like we get so caught up in life, uh, in every day's life, that we tend to forget uh, Allah's gifts to us. And uh, like the other day I was reading Quran and there was this verse that says that um, the believers, when they, when they look at the skies, they say, Subhanaka Rabbana wa khalaqta hadha wa til. And I've never, I've never looked at the skies before and, and thought that. And then this morning I was on my way to work and uh, so I actually what, what, looked at and thought that. Do you want to tr let's translate real quick what? So that when the believers look at the sky, they say, Glory be to you, O God, O our Lord. You could not have created this for no purpose. Exactly. Batilin, exactly. Purposelessly. Okay. And so for the first time in my life, after reading this, uh, this uh, uh, verse, mm -hmm. I actually this morning looked at, at the skies and I was like, Yeah, very true, you know. Subhanaka Rabbana wa khalaqta hadha wa that, that you could not have, you could feel that this, this universe cannot be purposeless. And, and I'm, I was also, not just that, but I was also relating to the Quran on a personal level mm -hmm. and in a personal experience, you know, in my daily life. Okay. And something really interesting. Now, Allah says in this specific verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ That this has been sent down is an Arabic recital. Quran can mean something to be recited. So we can't not read it. If we don't read it, we're not, it's not the Quran anymore. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Now, before we move into تَعْقِلُونَ real quick, the Arabic language. Why did Allah choose Arabic? I mean, first of all, He does what He wants. SubhanAllah Ta'ala, He can do what He wants. But some people, we need to see the wisdom behind it so that we can encourage each other to read Arabic. When people explain these meanings to me, I decided to read Arabic and to start learning how to read Arabic. And then Allah, while seeing that I wanted to, immediately enhanced my ability. I never, nobody thought I could ever read Arabic. I was uh, like totally, you know, I used to always take AFL, Arabic as a foreign language, in, in class, you know, in school. So, subhanAllah, but again, when there's a will, there's a way. That concept there, definitely. And so, Arabic language, I can say they in English. And it could mean one guy, uh, two guys, for example, two girls, four guys, four girls. In Arabic, you have different words for all of these. You can say, hunna, which would mean they, but girls. You can say, hum, they, but guys. You could say, huma, they, two guys or two girls. You could say, huwa. You know what I mean? Very, very, it's a very expressive language. And again, Quranic Arabic specifically is very, like we all, a lot of us know the Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. May praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The most merciful, most gracious, most merciful. Okay? Now, the mercy. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. That letter, ha, ha, which is, doesn't really have, the closest thing would be H in, in English. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. These, these letters are specifically chosen. They're not, okay, but when you come at the end, walad dalin And, but, Please guide us the path that is straight, the path whom you've bestowed upon your blessings, not those who've, who've earned your wrath, nor those astray. Walad dalin. It's a tough letter. Walad dalin. You feel that they're, oh, I don't want to be of them. Do you know what I mean? Very expressive language. That's something about the Arabic. But I want to move on real quick again to taqilun. Uh, what do you feel? I mean, this, what's this comprehend thing? If someone, do we comprehend with our brains or our hearts? Or is it both? I, what do you hear about taqilun that perhaps you could comprehend, as Allah was saying? has to be both. I mean, like the example she talked about, she certainly sees the sky every day, but she doesn't really see it. But when she had it on her mind to really see it and uh, wonder about it, mm -hmm. she's seen it with both her eye and her heart. Yeah, and the so eyes, let's say, is through the brain, and then, but the heart now... It is involved. It's, it's, she, she definitely ha has seen the sky before, but now that when the heart is involved, it's, it's a different experience. I mean... So can we say that a lot of people have a non-comprehensive <coughs> comprehension, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they actually don't use their heart no. and only use their brains? Yeah, I was yeah. reading something the other day about the relationship between the tongue, the mind, and the heart. Mm -hmm. And how the tongue recites and it, process, it processes through the brain and so it reaches the heart. Okay, the tongue recites, goes through the brain, and then finally reaches the heart. It reaches the heart. That you need to process it in your mind before the feeling can settle in your heart, and your tongue needs to say it so your brain will get it. And it's sort, some, some sort of relationship, but I loved how it went, because cause it's true. I mean, when you read the Quran out loud, it's different than when you, when you, just, you, know, when you just read it silently. Or, oh, that's very you know, true. Or, or in zikr, if you're, you know, um, in remembrance, like if, you know, if you're saying subhanAllah, subhanAllah, it's different. Mm -hmm. you, so it's different. So, so I tried it out since I read that, and... SubhanAllah, every time I read out loud, or as I say SubhanAllah out loud, it's very different so, um, than when I say it From silently. Say it so yeah, so, so the heart does feel it more, so there must be some relationship between the three. There, there must be, inshallah, and before we wrap this segment up, that's the thing. I mean, I had a doctor just tell me that every time, he see, and he's been doing this for years, he gives birth, he helps the women give birth, every time he sees a baby born, every time he says SubhanAllah, every time he sees a sunset, he doesn't say 